Hello and welcome guys, Armagam videos here. Today with a new tutorial about a flat design animation. As you can see right here in Adobe After Effects, we are going to recreate this one. And uh, yeah, it's not just only a 2D animation as you can see right here. Let me play this back. It's also It has also 3D elements as you can see those uh, paper planes. We are going to create them in Cinema 4D and I'm going to show you my workflow for um, connecting like 2D animations with 3D stuff such as those paper planes that I've mentioned. Uh, and in case you're familiar with the style of this background, um, it's the style of, or there's a designer, Alex Pascarella, I think he's working with or for Google. And yeah, check him out. I'm going to uh, link him in the description. Very great artist. I love his style and I've tried to recreate this one completely in Adobe Illustrator to provide it for this tutorial. And we are going to animate assets like the clouds to create a little parallax, of, uh, parallax effect. We're going to animate the boat right here. We're going to rotate the sun and I'm going to show you some tricks for that, like scripting in, Illust uh, in, in After Effects. And we're also going to animate the balloon right there, as you can see. And of course, then combine the 2D animation with the 3D paper planes right here. We're also going to model this paper plane. So there's a bit of modeling involved in this tutorial. And yeah, it's a bit of everything. So great technique to show you my workflow. Uh, great tutorial to show you my workflow. So um, yeah, I'm just going to close this one real quick because we're going to start over. Let me open up After Effects real quick. And of course, you're going to get this file right here from Adobe Illustrator and the truck itself. And yeah, I just saw that I could actually implement those truck in this document, but yeah, it's just cleaner. And here you can see I've created all those objects and made them a separate layer. And I've gave them I give them a name for uh, yeah obvious reasons. It's more structured and easier to use later on in uh, After Effects. So let's give this one a name real quick. I'm going to provide this in the description. You can just download it as well as the truck. So yeah. Okay, here we are in After Effects and let's start by creating a new composition. Let me bring up those settings from my second screen. Um, let's make it 30 FPS, full HD resolution, 10 seconds. I think we don't need more. Hit OK and next up, let me open the project file. Therefore, we got the illustration that I showed you, like the background and the truck itself. So we're just going to implement this or oh, we're going to bring it in. Of course, you need to double click in here, select illustration. And this is the thing that I've always messing up. I think it's composition. Yeah. As you can see, we got all the layers separately in here. So um, it's also made a composition. And that's the thing that we need. We're going to drag it in our comp, just like this. And if we click in here, we can now animate the different stuff that we got in here. Make sure to turn on, uh, to make it, to, to turn off the, the uh, to actually get final quality and also make it up to full right here so you get perfect rendering right here and since all these shapes right here are um, actually vector graphics you can turn on this one right here the setting right here for complex and for vector layer continuously rasterize as you can see right here that's like pretty sharp we can we could scale the we could scale those up actually and yeah, it's not needed right now because we're not scaling up anything right here. We're just going to animate the shape of them. So yeah, also let's bring in our truck. Boom, there we go. Let's bring it right in here and drag it down. Oops. Damn. I misclicked. So let's bring it to the left, just right around here. And yeah. So next up, we should be creating the animation of the truck. Therefore, I'm going to hit P to get the position um, keyframe. And for the position, we're going to start right around here. And after like three seconds, we're going to drag it 
to the right. And as you can see, I've clicked this stopwatch and this is going to make automated keyframes uh, in case you're switching on the timeline or if you're scrolling through the timeline. And we are then switching up some values in here is going to create a automated keyframe, but I think um, most of you should already know this. So to be precise, I'm going to bring it around here. Okay, let's see how fast that actually is. I just quickly ran it right out. Okay, let me bring this in right here. I think it's fine. Maybe we could make it even faster, but that should be fine now. Okay, make sure to save that out. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Just call it tutorial. And next up, um, yeah, it's actually very important that you find the right speed for the truck right now, because we're going to render this out then, and we're going to bring it into Cinema 4D to actually track the, 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 um, the truck. Track the truck. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're going, we need the speed actually to kind of animate uh, the paper planes behind it. So it's very important that you find the right speed right now and not later on. Otherwise, you have to change everything in Cinema 4D again, which is kind of, yeah, much of a hassle. Okay, that's fine. So let's save this. And next up, we should go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, click on Lossless, QuickTime. Format options, we don't want animation, you're going to get a huge file, Let's choose H.264. Okay, quality to 100 and let's click on output and let's save it out to, let's save it out as animation, just like this, okay. This is rendered pretty fast because it's, well, a very basic scene. And right now, you don't need to animate the sun and stuff like this, because um, in Cinema 4D, 4D, we just really need to see uh, the truck and how fast it's going, because this stuff right here is going to be irrelevant later on. Okay, next up, we're going to go into Cinema 4D, and we first of all need to set up our document. So make it the same size and stuff, just like in uh, After Effects, 30 FPS, Full HD Resolution, and yeah next up we need to create a background just like this now create a new material by double clicking in here and let's go to texture in the color panel and let's see desktop animation there we go hit open no go in here animation and hit calculate and click in here to editor and make sure to select animate preview. This way you're going to see the actually animated scene in the background right here. Boom, there we go. Now you can see that there's the truck driving by. Of course, it's very laggy. I think we have to go through it once. That's the thing, their workflow between Cinema 4D and uh, After Effects right now is kind of weird for this kind of stuff, but um, I think it's fine. You could also uh, create the OBG file of that um, airplane and then use Element 3D to actually get a more easier workflow. And yeah, there are several ways. So what I'm doing right now here is actually adjusting our camera for the animation later on. Make sure to create a camera and set it on. And well, now let's turn everything off. Oops, turn off the camera and let's actually create our airplane. First of all, let me save this out because, yeah, would be really a mess if this was just crashed. So let's call this paper planes, boom, just like this. And to model the paper plane, we are actually going to um, use a, where do we have it? A plane, make sure to hit N, N and then B. You could also go to display, garage shading lines. And right now we have way too much segments, so bring this down to like 4 by 4 just like this. Or I think we didn't really need... Yeah, bring down the hive segments to 1. Okay, so we got this right now, and we're going to fold a paper plane out of this. So, select the plane, press C to make it editable. 
go to the um, to the edge mode, select this one right here and just bring this down. There we go. We're finished. Our airplane is finished. Nope, that looks like a ill bird right here. So um, we need to adjust something. Therefore, I'm going to go to the point mode. Oops, let me press zero to get the rectangle selection. Make sure to tick tolerance selection and untick only select visible. And let's select those points. Press T to get the scale tool and just select the red one right here because we just want to shrink it down here. Okay, there we go. Something like this. Of course, we need to adjust those points here as well because that looks really weird. Let me see. Okay. Something like this should be fine. Let's select this point and bring it up as well. We're slowly getting the effect, guys, as you can see. Um, what you need to do now is select those two points and get the stitch and sew tool. Boom, bring it together. Same with this one. I think you could also press M and then P. There we go. And now all we need to do is select those two points, drag them together again, this one as well, bring it up. Make sure to be very precise actually. And now press zero again to get the rectangle selection tool. Select all three of them and select weld and then press once and boom, we got our sharp front edge right here. Let's see how that looks. I think it looks really fine actually. Let me see, maybe we should Bring this up, oops, bring this up. Let's bring those a bit more far away again. There we go. Maybe a bit down again. And you can see those, um, my shortcuts right here. E is to get the move tool right here, T to get the scale tool. If you press M, you get this, uh, this little panel right here showing you the options that you can choose from. And yeah, with one, two, and three, you can navigate. Instead of using those buttons, you can use one, two, three to actually navigate through it way faster. Okay, next up, what we need to do is create our texture for this little plane right here. So create a new texture by double clicking in here, go to turn off the reflectance, make the color white and give it a luminance, which is already set to white and bring it like to 30. Now let's apply the texture to our airplane. And if we render that out, you can see that there's really a smooth transition right here that we don't want. And that's due to the funk tag right here. So make sure to bring down the angle. And now you could see actually that there was a little slight change. If we render this out right now, you can see that there's this uh, little edge right there. Okay. There we go. That's our paper model. Uh, paper plane model. So if we now turn on our uh, our scene again, we now need to use our plane actually. Let's make a copy of it in case we're messing something up. So let's call this plane backup. Oh, paper plane backup. Let's drag this out right here. There we go. And select those uh, tags right here, make them red. This is like for the renderer. Uh, like you can't see it in the renderer and you won't see it in the editor. And just like this. And okay, we're going to leave this alone. Call this one paper plain real quick. And yeah, we're going to use this one now. So let's select the scale tool. Oops, of course you need to switch to the model mode again to get the, the whole model. Let's bring this down. Let's see if we can actually align the, the horizon right here, just like this. Okay. So now what we're going to create is actually press the middle mouse button to get this view right here to the top. And what we need to do now is create like a spline which is the path of our paper plane that it's going to follow. So go to like um, Bezier, get a Bezier curve and just randomly make your path actually. I want to have it fly like this. 
There we go. Let's turn off our background real quick and get rid of the camera. Where do we have it? Let me see real quick. Where's our path? Oh, it's right here. So completely wrong. <laughs> also, it's way too big. Okay, let me see. Let's grab our path. Why can I not see the camera right here? We need to bring the path in front of our camera, of course. Oops. Ah, there we go. You need to go to the uh, object, to the model mode again. Bring it in front of our camera. And it's right now it's way too big. So get the scale tool and bring it down again. Make it smaller, actually. And now we need to adjust the single points of it. Let me see. Okay, our pl plane starts from right around here. Then, of course, it should go up just like this. Here as well. Here a bit higher. And this is the final stage of it. Let's turn on the camera and see real quick how this looks. Okay, it looks kind of weird. Go to the model mode again. Let's see how we need to make this. I think we also need to rotate it, right? So press R to get the rotate tool. Where do we need to start? Just right here, I guess. Let me see. Maybe let's try something out. What happens if we use the Bezier tool from right around here, actually? So we're saving some time. It flies over here. Oops. Here and then out. Did this work even better? Why is it so hard right here? Okay, let's try this out. We're going to use this spline right here and go in here, turn off the background. Ah, that's a problem. As you can see, it's trying to... Yeah, that's the problem. We need to bring this right around here. This one is completely wrong. Can be a bit tricky, guys, but that's the part of the animation. Okay, let's bring this right around here. Okay, well, this should work. We will see in the end. Don't worry if it looks weird right now. Okay, oh, I just misaligned our camera again. Yeah, you see, that's a problem. If you want to move freely around the scene, make sure to turn this one here off. But yeah, you're going to learn from these fails right here which is good. Okay, so what we need to do now is go to our paper plane, right click Cinema 4D tags and select Align to Path. Ah, not Path, Align to Spline, sorry. And now drag in our spline right here. And as you can see it aligned. Also make sure to hit Tangential. <laughs> I don't know how to call it, Tangential. No idea. And as you can see the 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 nose of our plane actually aligned to the spline. That's what Tangential is doing right here. And if we now animate the position, you can see that our paper plane is flying on this spline right here. That's exactly what we wanted. So perfectly, all we need to do now is, so perfect, I mean, all we need to do now is adjust this spline right here, which is kind of a hassle right now. We can get rid of it. Let's see if it still works. Select the spline tag. Yeah, it still works. And yeah, we need to adjust the spline right now. And this for all the three planes that we're going to create. And then we're actually finished already. So um, yeah, then we need to bring this into After Effects, of course. But let me adjust the spline right here because we want to make it look good. 
Okay, first of all, it's going to fly around here. Make sure to turn this off. This one is going to be here. And let's see. Oops. This one gets a bit more higher and this goes way up and completely to the right. So it's off screen actually. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. If we turn on the camera again, turn on our background. Let's see. Okay. We can start to animate now. Wait. Select the tag right here and see the animation. It looks great. Maybe this one right here should get a slight change so it looks more fluent. Yeah, looks great. And we actually just need to animate this from 0 to 100 and it's going to be animated. But I guess you guys already see the problem. We need to track the motion, the movement of our truck right here, because otherwise it's going to be offset, like the truck is here or our airplane is here, which doesn't make sense. We want like, if the truck is right here, the, the little airplane or I don't know what it is, a little letter that's flying from those post truck right here. And it's going to fly out once it's uh, once it right here, once the truck is right here. So we need to kind of adjust the movement. Okay, so let's bring this to the right. There we go. And let's hit auto keyframe, auto keying, make a keyframe. Maybe bring it a bit more. Oops. Let's bring the spline point right here a bit more to the left. There we go. So it's completely behind the truck. And now let's turn on auto keying again. Or we'll go to zero. There we go, it should be zero. And now let's track it. Once the truck is here, we need to bring up the position to here. So it's still behind. The truck starts to drive and we need to bring the position to around here. The truck drives on. Where do we have it? 40 and we need to adjust it. And from here, from almost here, let's see how this looks. Is it always behind? If not, we need to adjust it. Okay, from here, it's perfectly aligned. Still be behind the truck. Okay. And from here on, we're just going to let it fly straight to the 100%. So let's see how this looks. Okay, weird, kind of stopped right here. Or just lagged because... Why is it stopping right here? Can you see this? It's going, going back, and then to the front again. Okay, that's kind of weird, but that's actually happened because um, the keyframes right here. So go to Window, Timeline, and let's see the position right here. Okay, let's check this out. Oops. We need to drag this. So you can see we're driving right here. And then boom, here comes the little stop. So let's zoom in right here. Oh, go to the F chord mode. Position. Okay, here's the problem. As you can see, it's going down right here, and that's not what we want. So maybe let's see if we can change the points right here to make it more smooth. Something like this. As you can see right here. Let's see. It's still behind the truck, still behind the truck, still, and then it flies off. Okay, we fixed the problem. So let's see how this looks. I think it, look, it looks weird because here it gets a really fast push, which kind of looks weird. So maybe bring this up so it's not going to start real quick. There we go. 
okay, maybe that was a bit too slow. But I think you got the idea. Of course, you need to spend some more time on it. I'm making it for the tutorial really fast, so it will look weird, but... And of course, um, you can keyframe the rotation of the plane because, I mean, it won't be flying, like, straight onto this point right here. You can kind of make it rotate, so I'm going to show it to you real fast. Paper plane, there we go, and once it's here, press R. On the paper plane, press R. Why can't I see it? Because I need to select this model mode again and rotate it just like this so let's see of course right here it should have no rotation just like this now it has a bit of rotation as you can see boom here as well and then it flies off let's save this out let's see how it looks looks kind of weird right here at the beginning because it changes the rotation as you can see look at this <laughs> yeah boom yeah and that's how I actually made those paper planes in cinema 4d there we go okay and yeah as you could see in uh, after effects we had like um, three paper planes but I'm going to leave this to you uh, I will just make one paper plane to kind of shorten the time of this tutorial. Uh, all you need to do is to create others again, make a spline, make another paper plane and create another spline path. That's it. Okay, all we need to do now is actually turn off our background and bring this C4D file into After Effects. So let me open up After Effects and let's bring in the paper planes animation did i actually call it like this let me see paper planes yeah okay we now need the file go to after effects and drag it right in here and we can do this because of this great feature or plugin called cineware so all we need to do right now is to go to illustration and drag in paper planes behind our truck and if we now look at this you can see there's our airplane coming from behind the truck boom um, as you can see right now we're having this software wireframe shading mode and you need all you need to do is change this from the renderer to Final, boom, there we go. You can see it adjusted the colors. It's a bit grayish right here due to the light. Of course, you can adjust this in Cinema 4D as well. Or you could use the cell renderer, the sketch and tools, uh, sketch and tools renderer in Cinema 4D. But I'm just going to leave it like this because I think it fits quite well. So let's see. If we render that out, let's see how it looks. We'll take some time. Maybe I'm going to fast forward this. Or I'm just going to use the time to talk to you guys. Yeah, I want to thank you guys again for like, whew, where are we right now? 27,000 subscribers almost. And I mean, guys, this is just crazy. Thank you guys. Really. Uh, the only problem I have with you guys are the suggestions. <laughs> like from 70, uh, 27,000 subscribers only five or six people are suggestion suggestion are suggestion me new tutorials man this word is killing me always uh look at this sweet animation <laughs> kind of fast but looks great don't you think and yeah guys i need more help on tutorials because i don't know what you guys want to see next or if you have any ideas or questions or problems because i'm just doing this for you guys and yeah i would be really thankful if you could Tell me your problems or anything like this regarding modern design. Okay, as you can see, it's perfectly aligned behind the truck. Here you can see the tip of our airplane, but I don't know if anyone will notice this one right here. Of course, you can uh, make it perfect in Cinema 4D right now, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's leave it like this. Look at this, perfect. 
flies out on the plane, uh, spline and then goes off of the screen. Okay, next up, uh, all we need to do is bring some more life into our background right here. Therefore, I wanted to show you the trick with the sun. Press R. Make sure that the anchor point of the sun layer right here is actually in the middle. And let's keyframe the rotation. Make a new keyframe. Go to like nine seconds. Type in 360 degrees. And the problem right now, right here is, it's going to make it once and then stop. But we want the sun to rotate like all the time. Let me see how this looks. Is it too fast? Yeah. So let's bring this keyframe even out of the composition right around here. And a cool little, or it's really, really helpful. And I've just found this out like one year ago. It could have self, uh, saved me so much time, but I didn't know about it. So all I need to do is press in here while holding down Alt, Alt, and you will get this uh, this expression thingy right here. You can type in some After Effects script right here. And what we need to do is write loop out, then parentheses, and type in cycle. What this does is actually cycle through your keyframes. Yeah. Oh, I just pressed escape, which was wrong loop out cycle it's going to go through your animation all the time like go through it once then again and again and again and again of course in this composition right here it makes no sense because the keyframe is uh all of the composition itself but um this ensures that it goes 360 degrees all the time it won't stop ever it's going to cycle through your keyframes right here all the time and that's a pretty great feature actually. Let's say you want to animate a ball that's going in a circle for a loader GIF animation for a website, then you can use loop out cycle. You can also, or just go to Google and search for loop out script in uh, After Effects. You could also type in ping pong, then it's going to make your animation, reverse, animate it back, then start it again, reverse it back, and so on, so on and so forth. So yeah, pretty great feature actually, actually. Okay, as you can see, here we are. Now, next up, what we need to do is actually go to, where do we have it? Oh, did I forgot to name this again? Hmm. Well, we can animate the boat. Pretty easy, just press P, get the position. Of course, bring this a bit to the left so it's already animating and drag this to right around here this out of the composition. Same with the clouds, press P, and the one in front is going to move faster than the one in the back. So let's go to right around here. Move it to the left. And let's see where are the other clouds. We won't animate this one, this one as well, but this is going to get animated. It's going to move very slightly. There we go. And this one right here, cloud left. Where do we have it? Big cloud, nope. Cloud back one. Yeah, I know my naming for the layers is like really revolutionary. <laughs> there we go. And all we need to animate right now is, where do we have it? The unnamed layer, there we go, our balloon. Therefore, I've just made this slight movement right here. Let's stretch them out because this will be too fast then. Let's see how this looks as a render. Take some time right now. Oops, I've just clicked away. Okay, now I'll render this part right here. OK. 
Okay, the next render will be very fluent. There we go. I think the boat is... Uh, yeah, the boat is way too slow. I mean, look at this. Is it even moving? Yeah, it is, but... <laughs> You can't even tell it, so let's go to the boat right here. Grab its position key keyframe. Let's delete it and give it some more movement. Just like this. Okay, and there we go. We are actually finished, uh, but I want to show you some more stuff. And yeah, that's that looks quite, quite good, actually. Okay, let's save this out in case something happens. Select everything by pressing control a and then two times u so it closes up all the 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 opened settings right here from the different layers and uh, to give your animation a bit more character create a new adjustment layer go to effects and presets and select noise make sure to drag it to the adjustment layer and give it a bit noise let me see, like, 2%, don't use colored noise, just like this, looks way better, in my opinion, it's very slight, but looks great. And, yeah, the cool thing about this Cinemaware combination of Cinema 4D and After Effects is that you can just go into Cinema 4D and... As you have seen in the, in the animation, this part right here is, like, really strong at flies out and boom turns really fast so we can just turn off our camera and the background fly around the scene and maybe adjust this and make it more smooth so select our spline go to the point mode right here and let's drag this one out so it's more smooth turn on everything again press ctrl s to save us out go to after effects again course now we need to re-render it let me just do the hello could you stop well my pt just won't stop it's too motivated let's drag this one right here and yeah, now it's going to get really laggy but let's see Let's see how this one looks right here. Okay, it's flying a bigger circle right here. Oh, maybe it's going off the screen, no. But yeah, here you can see it's more smooth right now. My MacBook is turning up the fans because of the intense rendering right here 3d stuff 2d animations vector graphics that's kind of intense for after effects i guess so let's just see this part right here oh come on yeah looks better and of course you can, I don't know, you can animate so much more stuff like a flat design character with some character rigging going around here or stuff like this and losing some papers animated in Cinema 4D and yeah, I mean, you're creative guys, you can create whatever you want, but I just wanted to show you the workflow of using Cinema 4D, Cineware and After Effects to create awesome looking stuff right here and also using those animated materials right here to actually see what you are doing within Cinema 4D, which is very great. And yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Well, I don't want to call it short, but for my, yeah, for me, it's actually short because I've made two, uh, two hour tutorials uh, already and those are like really heavy in the creation. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, guys. See you in the next videos. Leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new. And please give me, give me some hints on new tutorials, guys. Tell me what you're struggling with, what you want to learn, what you want to see, if you want to see speed art or some sort of series or stuff. Because right now I have holidays. I really enjoy creating those videos for you. And yeah, see you in another video. <laughs> there was a little German in, we, in me. 
See you in another video, guys. Armageddon videos.